Welcome back, I hope you're having a great day. This is OS 9 where we make our kernel multi-boot compliant. So what's that mean and why would we want to do it? Like I said in the last video, we're moving away from rolling our own bootloader, instead choosing to focus on developing the kernel. In this video we really cut those ties. I moved our old bootloader into a file called bootloader.asm where it will not be used. We have a new file called boot.asm that will be compliant with the multi-boot specification. The multi-boot specification is an open standard describing how a bootloader can load an x86 operating system kernel. By using this specification we can use something like grub or grand unified bootloader to load our kernel just like any other Linux kernel. Basically we're outsourcing the bootloading to something else. Um, we use this multi-boot specification and make sure that we conform and then any bootloader that supports multi-boot can load our kernel. In this case, you know, if we want to use real hardware, we can use Grub and put it on a, an ISO or a USB stick. And QEMU also supports multi-boot. We'll see that soon. So what's on the agenda for today? First, I'll show you what the end product is, what we'll be doing. Then we'll go through kernel.c, how it looks. We'll see the new boot.asm that is multi-boot compliant and kicks everything off once the bootloader starts executing boot.asm. That's our entry point. Then we have our make file. What kind of things are we doing to build the final kernel executable file and the linker file, linker.ld. Just a quick note before we jump in. Notes are on the wiki now. So if you open up the repository on GitHub, you can click the little wiki button or there's actually a link right in the readme now on master. So if you click that, it'll take you to the wiki here. It's a lot easier for me to update this so I can keep the video list up to date. And I'm in the process of getting source code and diff from previous for every single video we've had so far. So all you have to do is click on the link and you can see the differences between the two videos. So that's just a quick note. And now we can jump into the code. If we check out OS 9 on the repository, and then we can run make run, we'll see that we get a screen filled with X's and of course had to throw an OS 9 in the top left there. So this is what we'll be making, not too different from the other videos, but a little different under the hood. So let's take a peek at the C code that is making this work. We'll pop open kernel.c here and whoa, beautiful, we actually have a for loop. We are in the 21st century, we're really killing it right now. We have a for loop, so what's going on here? We have rows and columns defined at the top, just some uh, constants for the, you know, how large the screen is for this given VGA mode. We know that that's going to be those values. In the main method, we define a memory pointer for the video memory. We've done this before. It points to 0xB8000, which is where video memory starts in VGA mode. And then we have I and J, and we're just going to loop through all those rows and columns and fill the screen with Xs. Notice that it's times two because there's actually two bytes there one for the formatting and one for the actual character being displayed. Down below, we'll overwrite a few of those X's and add our little tagline, OS9. So we're adding it to byte zero of video memory up here, two, four, six, eight. So also multiplying by two, skipping that second byte because it's formatting and we don't really care to change the background right now. A challenge for you could be, hey, go through and every odd byte, one, three, five, seven, and so forth, change that color byte to something new, but I'll leave that to you. So that's it for kernel.c, pretty simple. What's next? I've pretty much banished our poor old bootloader.asm to a separate file and it's not getting used at all really. Forget it exists. Now we have boot.asm, which is multi-boot compliant, very exciting stuff. So I copied this pretty much exactly from a Linux journal article by Petros Kutupis. Sorry if I mispronounced that. The link is going to be in the description if I remember, but also in the notes on the wiki. It's a really great read, you should check it out. Let's see what he did. First of all, we're starting in 32-bit mode, which is awesome. We don't have to worry about switching to protected and all that stuff. We're assuming that our multi-boot compatible bootloader is doing that for us. Then we have section.multiboot. We have a magic number, one bad B002 and some flags, which we're just gonna set all to zero, and then our checksum, which appears to be negating that magic number and the flags. So I guess it's just flipping the bits or something like that, not entirely sure. We have our text section. Now wait a second, we have sections? That wasn't a, a thing before, was it? That's because we're going to compile this to be elf 
I386 format or something, we're using ELF format. Remember before we would do NASM-FBIN for binary, raw format. Now we're using ELF format, which allows us to have metadata such as these sections that you see here. With that said, we have a text section, which is where our actual code is stored, at least for this particular executable file. And we declare global start. I don't know what that's doing. It's just saying, you know, this labels global, I guess, whatever. Uh, or maybe that's our entry point. Um, but we have extern main. This is a pretty important line because in kernel.c, this is referring to our main method back in kernel.c. That's what this is referring to. So that's allowing us to point actually to the name of the method wherever it ends up being linked in memory instead of doing 0x1000 or whatever we did for our previous kernel attempts where we jump directly to a memory location. This is telling the linker, hey, you can take care of resolving that memory address, which is pretty awesome. Then we have start. We're going to disable interrupts. We're going to set up the stack, whatever, and then we're going to call our main method in the kernel. And once that returns, we're just going to halt, HLT, halt the CPU. And then we have BSS section, whatever. Uh, I don't really know what this is doing, honestly. Look it up. But uh, And then we have a label for our stack space, whatever. I don't know. Again, I copied this from Petros. Petros, thank you very much for that awesome article. And this seems like, I don't know. 20 lines, that's pretty good for writing a multi-boot compatible start entry point to your program. That's pretty awesome. The fact that he was able to figure that out, maybe by reading the specification, I definitely didn't. That's uh, huge kudos <laughs> to you, sir. So these are some beautiful text files sitting on our system here, but they're useless unless we can compile them into something useful. So let's see in our make file what we're doing in this build command now. It's different than it was before. We're still making our build directory. We're going to run NASM, but note the format is ELF32 instead of binary. So we can have our metadata. And we're just gonna use, uh, I used a variable, but we're, we're using the boot.asm, and we're assembling that into boot.o. Then we compile our kernel.c file. We're going to use 32-bit mode. Freestanding, meaning we can't assume that there's any kind of standard C library, which is the case, there's not. We're on bare metal here. Our C file is our kernel file, which is, of course, source slash kernel dot C. And then the output file is build slash kernel dot O. Then we're linking them. Instead of using the cat command to ram them together, we have the luxury of the LD command, the linker. So we're going to do LD. Our mode is elf i386. And dash capital T linker is passing a linker file, which we'll go over in a second. Not too familiar with linker files. But anyway, our output is the kernel out. So build slash pkos underscore kernel. That's our actual kernel file. Completely compiled and ready to go. And we're just going to pass our two compiled object files so that they can be linked. Basically, we're going to allow the linker to go into these files and find all of the metadata and the references to other methods such as like that external main call out and it's going to resolve those and give them actual concrete memory addresses. It's doing this automatically so that we don't have to worry about doing it and we won't mess up by one byte or whatever. There's less error because it's automated by this LD command which is awesome. Just for fun let's do an on the fly edit right now and make the X into an at sign why not. And then we'll go back and run make run again. And look at that. Our screen is filled with at signs. Beautiful. So I'll leave it to you. Go ahead, play around with that and see what you can do. And it certainly is great to be freed from the bootloader. It was a great experience, of course. But I won't miss worrying about the finer details of loading our kernel from the disk into memory and whew, all that wonderful stuff. So go to town, play around, think about what's next. Maybe a screendriver. Hmm, that might come a few videos down the line. Uh, and other than that, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed OS 9.